Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to episode two of my office makeover series. If you're new here or you missed it, this is what my office used to look like. Very simple, plain, boring, your four basic white walls. Episode one, I finally started adding some personality, some spice into here with a statement wall. I went with this Parisian style molding, which is like, I just cannot believe how great it turned out. I'm still so impressed. It does not look like a DIY, even though it was. But one wall does not make an office. I obviously have to keep going, but this time I just don't want to put as much effort as this wall was. As cute as she is, she was a lot of work. There was a lot of measuring, calculating, taping, cutting, mess, cleanup, more mess. It was a lot. So I want to focus today on a few small upgrades that will continue to help elevate the space and get it together. So let's get started with another wall. So the wall in question is this one right here. I'm a little annoyed that I have to do this one at all because the upgrade is just fixing it because of the current state that it's in. We were renting out this house before and I believe this was the kids room and so the kids had a bunch of posters on the walls. Whatever they used when they took it down it ripped off the plaster a little bit aggressively in the spot as you can tell by the smiley face that was left for me. I can't really be that mad because it's a smiley face and um, as a millennial you better believe I had like a hundred and posters on my bedroom wall so I forgive them and also I don't know how well you'll be able to tell but this entire wall is like scuffed up especially in this spot because when we were doing the statement wall Dustin basically was in here painting and rubbing his entire body on the wall and he was wearing black and it transferred so the whole wall is scuffed up plus we have the patching to do so we might as well just address it and start fresh we're gonna start fresh by first patching up the spots where the plaster was peeled off. To do that, I'm just gonna use some wall spackling and a spatula to cover up all the spots. While the plaster dries, we're gonna go over on the opposite side, do a little upgrade to this window because I really think it needs it. It's just another plain boring wall besides the window, but I have some problems. Let's run through the list. Problem number one is that yes, it is boring. It needs a little something, at least some texture. And then I'm not a huge fan of the blinds that we have on them. I did not co-sign on those. I also really hate the metal like drawstring to bring it up and down. And it's broken right now. I don't know how, but not a fan. And then two, this window is great. Obviously, I need lighting in here that I film, but if you look outside, there's a bunch of houses and apartments that are kind of at the same eye level as me. They're kind of close, like a little too close for my liking, and that makes me quite uncomfortable when I'm filming. Like, I just feel like so many eyes are on me, and it's just a little bit awkward. I need some sort of solution to give me like a little bit more privacy while still letting some light in. Also, when people are coming in and out of their house onto their balconies, it can be distracting. I'll be filming and then the entire time I'm like just non-stop looking and just interrupts my flow and my conversation with you. But my solution for all of that is obvious. We're gonna do some curtains. But I really wanted a specific look. Something very sheer, flowy, lots of pleats, kind of like a romantic vibe. Once I had a clear vision of what I wanted for the curtains, I did some browsing on Ikea. I found the Vidka hanging system, which was perfect for what I wanted. It's the sort of invisible track for curtains that you can attach to the ceiling, which was great to keep things looking light and not sort of as visually heavy as a full curtain rod would look. I made my little shopping list, headed to Ikea to grab all the things I needed. I also picked up these curtains, which were the perfect length and sheerness that I was looking for. Back at the house, I started working on installing the curtain track with the help of my sister. We did some measuring to figure out where I wanted the track to land on the window, as well as which distances we wanted to place and drill the screws into the ceiling. One of the best tips I've picked up watching all the home decor shows that I watch is to use a piece of tape as a guide for where you want to drill. It makes things so much easier. Basically, you grab your piece of tape you mark all the spots where you want to drill you stick it on your wall and you drill through the points that you marked and that's it you're all done your holes will always be in the perfect spot but before we started drilling we may have had to phone a friend we're phoning a friend how do i get this into this but then we were on our way to drill the hooks into the ceiling in order to attach the track we did have a few mishaps oh <laughs> and celebrations but then we were on our way drilling the hooks into the ceiling. We finished drilling, removed the tape, and we were moving on to attaching the curtains to the rails. To do that, we had to use these little glider hooks. So one part has wheels to move along the track of the rails, and the other has a hook to attach to the curtain, and they need to be connected. Not gonna lie, at first these were annoyingly difficult to snap together, but Sophie found a good strategy to get them on, and we were on our way snapping them together, putting them on the track, and attaching the curtain. And when I was adding on the curtain, I did leave about seven to eight spots in between the hooks to give me that pleating effect I was 
was looking for. Once we had one curtain panel attached, I wanted to see if I was getting the right effect with the spacing I was leaving, so I attached the rail to the screws, and that's when the worst happened. The whole screw came Now we actually have to go back to these bigger screws because the shorter ones were not holding at all. After some laugh crying, we took out all the screws that we had already done and redid the whole thing with longer screws which worked much better and we got the track back up. The last clip that you saw me in was when I was finishing putting up the left side of the curtain. That night I wrapped up and I was looking back at it and I was like, yes, you did that. It looks really good. I was really happy with it. The only thing I was thinking, because I want a lot of pleating, a lot of texture, I felt like I needed one extra panel on each side. So three instead of the two that I currently have. I just I had to go back to Ikea and get myself another, an extra panel. So I did that, I went to Ikea, found the same curtain that I had chosen already and grabbed an extra pack of that. And then I needed the little like plastic these that you put on the track. I found them, but they were different. I don't know, in a matter of weeks, they somehow like decide to change the look of them. And I like consistency, especially when I'm like working on one project. It's bothering me, but I'm just hoping that it's gonna work the same and I'm not gonna have any further issues. I'm gonna keep going with the old ones and then I'll save the new version of those for the new panel. So at least I can keep track of it a little bit and hopefully if they are a little bit different, it won't impact the way that the curtains slide. So I continued attaching the curtains in the same way I had been doing. The new version of the little gliders were actually much easier to get on which was a pleasant surprise and probably the reason for the upgrade. Once I had all the curtain panels on I was finally able to get them up and attach the rails which actually stayed up this time. The curtains are finally done. I might give them a steam. You'll have to wait till the end of the video to get the final full proper look at them. Right now we're gonna go back to the wall, sand down the spots that we had filled in with the plaster and give it a new coat of paint. That's exactly what I did. I got the plaster as even and smooth as I could and then started prepping for paint. I painted the wall using a satin ultra white scuff resist Resistant paint from Bear. The wall is painted. I will show you close up how good it looks, how well we did covering, you know, the little design that the kids left for me. Right now we're gonna move into some new and old furniture into the office so it's it starts looking like a real office. First thing I moved in was my desk, which I've had for years now. I do like it, but I think it's a little bulky. I don't know, just not exactly the vibe that I want in here. So she will probably be upgraded in the future. I then brought in my computer chair, which needs to go ASAP. Not the vibe, not the aesthetic at all. Next I did the easiest upgrade to liven up and finish off the desk area which was to style it with some plants. Quickest way to bring some color and just some life into an area. So I placed my little fiddle on the side and my DIY vase with some eucalyptus branches on the desk. Now here's a close-up look at the wall we refreshed. The patching and painting works so perfectly. At this point I've already forgotten about the peels and the scuff. The bright white is really reflecting more light which is perfect for filming and shooting in here. As for styling this area, I had purchased a Sherpa chair. It did take months to arrive but it was easy enough to even though it's a little more yellow tone than I'd like, I am happy I went with this affordable option because the cats love to come in here and destroy it and play on it. I styled it on an angle against the wall and it's just great to have if anyone wants to come in here and chat with me or if I'm just doing work on my phone and want to lounge. The wall area is still quite plain though, but I do have a whole plan that will be coming up so you'll have to subscribe for that. On the opposite wall to my desk is my little makeup station. I had the silver trim mirror which just wasn't working for me anymore because of its height, so I upgraded it with this stunning floor length mirror. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. If there's anything that you need from this video, it's this. And next to it, I just set up this little Ikea side table, which may need a future upgrade or replacement, but for now, it just keeps my everyday makeup. Next to the makeup station, I set up my clothing rack. It does move around the house with me when I film my fashion videos, but this is gonna be its main spot. I styled a wire basket at the bottom just to keep my camera gear there so it's nice and organized. And it's also next to an outlet, which is great, so I'll be able to keep all my cameras and and batteries and all that charged and ready to go. This wall again is gonna need more, but for now I just finished styling it with this cute picture of my sister, my mom, and I. Finally, the little upgrade that made the biggest difference in here, the curtains. So happy with them. 
chef's kiss. The, the look I wanted, they served their purpose perfectly. They let enough light in even when they're fully covering the window so I can keep filming in here and give me enough privacy so I'm not awkward anymore. And honestly, lately when I'm in here, I completely forget that there's anything or anyone outside. The office is finally done for now. I still have a few projects that we're gonna do in here. Still a lot more decor to add into this to like really pull the space together. But I'm really happy with how it looks right now. It looks more like an office. It was just an empty room before. I hope you guys enjoyed. Here are two more videos to watch. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.